Okay, so now you were you're done with sampling, you're done with the analysis, and you now have the results. So those results has to be translated to the general pub for the general public to understand. Okay, now of course before you report that you have to analyze the data first. Now as I have mentioned before in the first video, um, in an analysis, you have to take um, samples that's enough for several replicates. Diba? So you have to do several replicates for that sample in order to provide confidence that the analysis was carried out correctly and also to get an indication of how reliable your results are. So this is where we use statistics. So, for example, we have this data. So, we have this data in the analysis of glucose in Berbrand swap. So, how do we know if how do we know if these data are accurate, or how do we know if these data are precise? So, before that, let us define what accuracy and precision are. So, accuracy. is the measure of refers to how close your measurements are to the true value so we don't really have a true value right we don't really know the true value rather okay this is what we are trying to look for the true value okay but your, your measurements will give you an idea of what the true value is, but you don't really know it, but you will have an idea based on your measurements and your data analysis. Now, precision, on the other hand, is, I mean, it refers to how close your measurements are to each other. Okay, so let's look at this figure here. So can, this is diba, this is the usual example and the best example actually to understand accuracy and precision. So in a dartboard, your aim or the true value is the bull's eye. So here, so in the first figure. Your measurements kanang blue nga kanang blue nga x mo na ang dart ang darts so the darts refer to your measurements okay so ang imong measurements are very close to each other see which means that your measurements are precise and your measurements are very close to the bull's eye which means that your measurements are accurate so this is high accuracy and high precision your values have high accuracy and high precision. Next, in the second figure, values are close to each other, but they are very far from the bull's eye, which means that they are not accurate, but they are precise. In the third figure, there are values that are actually close to the bull's eye. And some of them are close to the bull's eye, but they are very far from it. They are very far from each other. That means they are accurate, but they are not precise. In the last figure, nothing hit the bull's eye, so they are not accurate. And they are not even precise if you look at the darts okay so I hope you understand the, the measure of I mean I hope you understand the difference between accuracy and precision okay so um, we have several measures so we have several measures of accuracy and precision kanang numerical figures 
to say that it's accurate and it's precise okay so let's define ter these terms okay so first is the mean okay so Okay, so first is the mean. So for example, the mean is basically just the average of your data, of your measurements. So for example, let's just say this is, let's just consider batch one. So batch one, like, for example, this is done on that day, mauna ang measurement of this sample, okay? Batch one nga sample. Okay, so you have five measurements because you have five replicates, okay? so. The mean, which is labeled as, I mean, which is symbolized as that X bar. So that's the mean. It's basically just the average. So for example, for this one, the average is just 20.50 plus 20.55 plus 20.52 plus 20.50 plus 23.51 all over the number of replicates so that's five one two three one two three four five so that's five so you get here 21.116 that's the mean okay so the mean is basically just the average it shows the central tendency of data okay Okay, average ba yan? So, kung sa ang pinaka, kung asa sila nag-abot. Central tendency of your measurements. Next is the standard deviation. The standard deviation, symbolized as S. So, this is a measure of precision. Kung unsa ka precise ang imong measurements. Okay? So, this will show you the, sp the spread of your data. So, kung unsa ka lapad ba? Unsa ka lagyuon ang imong data or unsa ka dugulon lagyuon or kadugulon imong data okay so the the formula to to compute for the standard deviation deviation is the square root of the summation of x x measurement minus x bar or the mean squared all over n minus 1 okay so for this case um the the standard deviation is basically just so let's first start x the measurement minus so let's compute for this first so for one that's 20.50 minus 21.116 squared then 20.55 minus 21.116 squared 20.52 minus 21.116 squared 20.50 minus 21.116 squared 23.51 minus 21.116 squared and then you add that okay so you get this summation and you divide it with n minus 1 so here n minus 1 which means this n is ang n is the number of replicates so minus one that's four divide by four and take the square root of the whole thing okay so don't forget ha sud next square root ang numerator of denominator dili ra ang numerator ang naka square root okay so that means you have to compute this first before you take the square root okay so what you get here is um 1.338 so actually standard deviation is because it's the spread man, diba? Spread of data. That means you have positive and negative standard deviation. So, you, you need to add something to the mean and subtract something to the mean. Mauna ang range kung unsa ka, ka, unsa ka precise ang imuhang data. Okay? So, if you see here, this is the Gaussian distribution curve or the normal distribution curve. I mean, Gaussian curve or the normal distribution curve. So, if you see here, actually, diba, this is the average. This point is the average. Where is where the average is where there is zero standard deviation. 
magkadaghan the, there are many ang number of measurements so this amount of measurements has this amount this ang highest number of measurements kay zero ang standard deviation of course because it's the mean right obviously and then magka magka dagko ang st the standard deviation magka dagko ang standard deviation sa kanang lesser na nga measurements okay 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 so next is we have the coefficient of variation so we have the coefficient of variation okay so the third one is the coefficient of variation cv or we also call that relative standard deviation okay because the formula for that is actually just standard deviation divided by the mean times 100 because it's relative so this is the best measure of precision this is better compared to standard deviation because it is it relates to the mean so from here we just have 1.338 divided by um, 21.116 times 100 we get 6.34 so that's your um, CV now now we have a measure of the precision already right we know the measure of precision and we also understand you have to understand the meaning of the terms uh, the coefficient of variation the mean the standard deviation so now we have to know the sources of errors so okay so first source of error is personal error this is what we call as blunders so for example an example is nakalimot or you mistakenly um wrote the value or the measurement in your logbook diba just personal error another is you added the wrong chemical reagent so it's personal error or you mistakenly recorded the mass so it's personal error okay next we also have random errors now random errors are those errors that are non-reproducible these are non-reproducible errors so you can never have the same error again na imong gituyo o reproduce you can't reproduce these errors so for example ang noise sa instrument instrumental noise diba you can't really control these things and then last one is systematic error so in systematic error um you know the source of error okay and so it ang ang the, the systematic error produces results that consistently deviate from the true answer so for example you're using a burette that's 100 ml burette i mean pipette sorry 100.0 ml nga pipette but then ang pipette mismo you know that this pipette dispenses 100.5 ml ang actual jude niya nga ba dispense so you know the error so that's 100 i mean that's 0.5 ml nga error diba so this is what you call as a systematic error okay next let's discuss let's discuss significant figures and how to round them off so the number of significant figures in a measurement significant figures so the number of significant figures in a measurement is um, determined by the standard deviation okay so um a final result is reported to the correct number of significant figures when it contains all the digits that are known to be correct plus a final one that is known to be uncertain so 
basically namagoy some um some some like flask baron class some instruments or flasks gives results that have a specific number of accuracy i mean figures of accuracy so like for example ang burette it only dispenses it has an accurate value of 50.0 so kutob sa 0 0.0 accurate na siya but after sa they add one more value to kanang this is the uncertainty to show the uncertainty okay so that is why they devise um rules to sorry they devise rules to know the significant fig how many significant figures you need to retain in your in your calculation or in your measurement okay so one the first in the first let's first um do multiplication and division so for example so the number of significant figures in multi to be repeat to be reported in final result should be equal to the one with the lowest number of significant figures so this is logical okay diba lowest jud, lowest number of significant figures you just have to think about that because that is the least accurate man so imong report should have should consider the least accurate also diba so for example 0 0.0032 divided by 11.2 try try it so it's 0 0.000028 now in here this value has the lowest number of significant figures two sig figs okay that's just three and two so your answer should also have two significant figures so two eight five seven manasha again sir no so you have to round that off into 0 0.000029 so that you only have two significant figures okay now how about if you have 10 raised to the power of negative 3.9 times 10 raised to the power oh, sorry 10 raised to the power of negative 1.12 so your answer is 10 point negative 5.02 but then the lowest number of significant figure is 2 3.9 diba this has 2 significant figures so you should convert that into two significant figures that's equal to 10 to the negative 5.0 okay now how about in addition and subtraction so for addition class for addition and subtraction okay for addition and subtraction um the lowest let's just show this as an example huh? okay it's difficult to understand this with words so for example we have 12.11 18.0 then 1.012 and then you add that up so you get 31.122 okay now the lowest i mean the number of significant figures that you should report lies i mean depends on this value why because it has the number with the lowest decimal nga lowest number of decimal place so it only has the tenths right whereas 12.11 has the tenths and the hundredths kini tenths hundreds thousand so katong nai lowest ra only actually highest man yun ang tenths no but um so katong na ay na ay pinakagamay og number nga decimal place so you only have the tenths here so you should also report up to the tenths so it depends on the number of decimal place okay so if i added um if i added zero 
zero here, then mo consider siya sa 12.11. We should we show we should report if inana pa na if that had been the case, then we we should report 31.12. Kaya four, I mean two man ka bukdi siya place ni. Okay. Okay. So let's add now. Let's start know the rules on significant figures. So how do we know which figures are significant in a measurement? Okay. So, first rule is first rule is all non-zeros are significant. Are significant. Okay? So, for example, 6,575. You have four sig figs. If you have 0 0.543, you have three sig figs. Number two. So remember, all non-zeros are significant, okay? Now, number two. Any zero, any zero preceding the non-zero is not significant. So, for example, we have 0 0.005. These, these zeros are not significant. So, only 5 is significant. Sorry. That's 1. And then, if you have 0 0.00232, these zeros are not significant. So, you only have 3 significant figures. Okay? Next. Zeros between... Two non-zeros are significant. So this is what we call a sandwich zeros are significant. Okay? So for example, we have 4.5006. So these two zeros are significant and all non-zeros are significant. So all of them are significant. So that's five. Next, zeros after a non-zero at the right side of the decimal at the right side of the decimal place decimal point are significant okay so, for example, 0 0.500. These two zeros are significant because let's just consider the values after the decimal point, okay? So, these two zeros are significant because there is a non-zero before it, okay? So, that means you have 3. This zero is not significant because zeros preceding... The non-zero digit is not significant, John. Okay? If you have 47000, that's 470,000, you only have two significant figures. Because it's, remember, it's at the left of the decimal place, decimal point. So, we only consider this if it's after the decimal point. So, for example, 4.00. Because it's after the decimal point and it has a non-zero before it. That means it has three significant figures. Next, 0 0.00500. So, these zeros are not significant. These zeros are significant because they are at the right side of the number and right side of the decimal point and there is five before it. Okay, and then all non-zeros are significant. So, that's three sig figs. Okay? Next, 